Punch needle is like painting with yarn. It's an excellent way to create beautiful illustrations with fibers. So today we're going to create a punch needle pillow with a planned design on it. gripper strip frame which I'm really excited about it's pretty big it's too big for my pillow but I can still use it it's really ideal for punch needle because it's so easy to work with so I'm taking my fabric put it on here so now I've I've laid my fabric over it and I can just pull on all sides and then the strips grab the fabric really great i've drawn out the pattern already so i have to make sure that it's straight it's really super easy you just pull it up a bit and it grabs by itself it's like velcro a little bit although these teeth are a bit sharper make sure this line is straight and it's already super tight I'll be using the laver punch needle and from the three available sizes we'll be using the middle size for this entire project pretty simple to prepare the needle just make sure this is open slide it in and just close the wheel until it's tight and it can go anywhere so now you have a certain length you can make it smaller and higher with a long needle you make long piles and with a shorter needle you make short time. I'm setting this to 2.9 centimeters. Make sure it's tight and my needle is ready to go. We're going to use only one setting for this kit. I'm going to start with this olive green. First we have to thread the needle. I'm pushing it in at the top, making sure it comes out at the bottom. There I make a loop, so I open up this a little bit and I put in my tail of the yarn pull it all the way through like that then I have to thread this tiny little hole at the top here as well so I push my threader in from the back push it in open up the loop put in the tail again like that and then pull it through okay so I'm pushing my needle in and then I'm just moving forward with tiny stitches following the line here First line is done. 
So these are now secure and because the gripper strip frame holds the fabric really tight, this is really easy and subtle to punch with. I really love it. I'm just going to outline it first. So now I'm going to continue making this same movement and going alongside my previous stitches and I'm stitching at the middle point of the previous stitch just beside it. But when I'm done with an area and I want to take out my needle and start at a different point, I just pull it up, hold the yarn there and make sure there's a little tail here. And then I can just cut it off and then afterwards I will push all these tails to the other side. And I have to say guys it's so comfortable. I'm so happy that I made this thing. I've just finished everything in this olive green color and as you can see I've got a lot of tails sticking out so I'll show you how I solved that. But first I also wanted to show you the other side so let me flip it over. On the back side it looks like this. We've created files is what you call it and these are going to be the front of the pillow in the end. Punch kneading is super easy. You can learn it really fast but there are a few rules that you have to know and you have to obey for it to work. First rule is the yarn always has to have slack. So it comes straight from the bowl and then goes in at the top of the needle here and it has to go in smoothly without any obstruction. So if you put your hand on it and start punching, you will start pulling out stitches. So that's rule number one. And number two is that you have to make sure that you don't pull up your needle too far. Keep touching the fabric go down. Rule number three is that you have to push it down as far as you can. So the handle has to touch the fabric. So come up, go over, go down. And it's super easy. So what I'm doing is I've made a outline and I'm now going to continue punching round and around along this outline until I reach the middle and I filled the entire bit. And for this design it's important to not make the stitches too small. So I make them about eight millimeters long so that it doesn't become too bulky. Because on the other side we've got the loops and for every stitch that you make, you create a loop on the other side. So if you make tiny stitches, you will create a lot of loops on the back. And that will become very bulky. So don't make your stitches too small. If you're interested, I've got a whole video on this specific punch needle and how it works. So if you're a beginner and you want to learn, that might be a good place to get started. As you may have seen other videos from me, you know that I will probably have a kit of this design. So in my shop, you can find all kinds of tools that you need to get started with punch needle, but I also have kits. They're all beginner friendly, so I have small kits, but I also will have one of this exact design. In the kit, I will have the snap frame instead of the gripper strip frame because that might be better if you are a beginner. But if you're interested in making a gripper strip frame, which I can totally get, then I will have some of the strips available. You can make a frame yourself. Uh, I will have a tutorial on how to make this frame out uh, on this channel next week. So if you get the strips, then you can watch the tutorial and make a gripper strip frame. But if you don't want to do all that, I totally understand. So I will have snap frames available, which I've used in other videos in which I'm making pillow kits. Um, I will have that available as well.
So guys, I'm almost done with the punching part. But first I wanted to go over one little rule that helps make the outcome more crisp and clean. So around the edges, so the square shape of the pillow, I make smaller stitches than the normal stitches. I make stitches of about half the size of a normal stitch and I make two rows of them. I also do this around the shapes of the leaves or the pot for example and also the detailing inside the pot. So make smaller stitches for one or two rows and then just go on with larger stitches. So you have to go on with larger stitches because otherwise it gets too bulky. But by doing these smaller stitches, you make the lines of the drawing of the illustration more crisp and clear. So that's why you do this. So you also do this inside the pot. So at the top, we have uh, lines of the cream color and the burnt orange color and the lines of the cream color exist out of two rows of these smaller stitches. I've finished punching the entire thing and I think it looks really cool. I'm now going to take her off here. Let's see how that goes. To be careful a bit because these teeth here can be sharp. So this is what it looks like up close. That's pretty easy. And there we go. This is the pile side. So this is going to be the front of the pillow. I think that looks really nice, sharp edges only here. So you're probably thinking, okay, this doesn't look good at all, but we're going to clean this up and I'll show you how. So this is something that you have to do for all your projects where you use, where you use the pile side as the front side. You will have to clean up your piece because these loops that have been created can have a life on their own and we just want to wiggle them in the right space. So I'm going to use my punch needle without any yarn in it, of course. And I'm just going to use the tip to go along all the lines and just wiggle all the loops in the right place. So some of them may be intertwined or locked in place by some other stitches and you just have to pull them out. Not too hard, of course, because if you're going to pull really hard those loops will come loose. So here we've got a tail. I'm just going to cut that off. Mm -hmm. 